Hello, I'm doing a code review. My name is Eric Normand, and I run a site called purelyfunctional.tv. And I'm doing a code review from, for one of my members. He's created a to-do list app using my web development enclosure course. And so I'm doing a code review just to help him out. So I'm in the GitHub repo here. It's called Stuff. Of course, it doesn't have much in the README. Um, so I'm just going to start looking around, and I'm just going to comment in general. Um, stuff I notice, stuff that could be improved, stuff that is interesting, um, but also stuff that um, I think uh, would be an interesting improvement, like not because there's something wrong with it, but just you know a new way to move forward on it. Now, here's the thing. This is based on my course. So some of this stuff might be actually against what I do in the course. So it's not really uh, Daniel's fault here um, for doing it that way. Um, but, you know, as you get better, the, the, way, the way you would do it will evolve. Uh, and so I've probably evolved since I made that course. And um, some of the things are the way you would show someone when you're teaching them. It might be different from the way you'd actually do it in production. So um, with those caveats, let's jump right into it. So this is the to-do list with the items, and he's nicely broken stuff down into uh, the handler, the model, and the view. Let's take a look at the view. I, I don't expect to see much interesting in here. Um, so he's got a new item form and an items page that probably lists the stuff and it has a new item. Yeah, so he calls new item in there. Yeah, I mean, it looks, it looks pretty good to me. Um, I mean, it's just standard hiccup. Okay. Uh, you know, you might, just as a comment, there's this stuff here on line 33 to 36 where it's kind of standard. Like you're probably going to want to repeat that in several places. And if you want to repeat it, it probably means you might want it all to be the same when you change it. So that might be something to pull out there into some other thing. Same with these scripts at the bottom. He's adding jQuery and then the bootstrap. That's cool. I mean, it's, there's nothing wrong with the way you did it. Um, okay, let's take a look at the handler. So this is where the different items are. Uh, the different um, routes are handled. Um, the routes I saw already were defined in core. But I just want to see. He's... Um, He's creating an item for a user ID, which is in the params. Okay, that's interesting. The name is also in the params. The description is in the params. Uh, I'm, I'm curious where that user ID comes from, but I bet it's in some middleware. that Because you see it's a, a keyword, and the other ones are strings. So they're probably coming from different places, which is cool. Um, and getting the database out of the request as well. That's cool. And then creating the item, it returns an item ID, and then there's a redirect to the user ID's items. Okay, that's cool. So one of the things that Daniel has done is um, taken the course, the, the app we developed in the course, and uh, gone further and added users. So each user has a list instead of um, everyone sharing the same list. So I can see that that's different. That's not something I had before. Uh, and then handle index items, and that's calling the view that we had before. So read items. I want to go see the model. Okay. So this is going to be a lot of SQL stuff. So just right off the bat, the first thing that I think of, this is fine. It looks great. Um, but you might want to try Hug SQL, 
which lets you put the SQL text, which like in this case is just strings, it lets you put that into its own file so that it's formatted using you know a SQL formatter instead of text strings. Um, and uh, it's actually a, a cool system because it has a lot of the things that you would build in, like niceties that you would build in yourself um, already built in, like the fact that queries will return values, but um, uh, commands don't return values. So check out Hug SQL. It'll let you pull out these strings from in here and clean up the clean up the closure a bit. Um, so create item returns the first ID. That's cool. So the user ID looks like a UU ID. Um, so you're storing it in the database as a UU ID, but you're treating it as a string up until until it hits the database. That's fine. That's fine. Update item. That's just no. I don't know. Maybe make a note of that. That the U the user ID should be a user ID. I mean, it should be a UUID, but in string form. Because at this point, if you try it right here on line 24, if you tried to store it, you know, you do a create item on this user ID, and it's not a UUID, this would break. Um, update item, set checked out, where ID equals. That's cool. So checked out is a Boolean, yeah. And that's nice. And he's using this pattern that I showed where update returns the number of items that were changed, but it's also in a list. So you can compare it to one to see if, if it did what you expected. Um, and then, so ID is also a UUID. Okay. So you've just I, I just want to point out that it seems that you have inconsistent handling of um, ID on the items and the user ID, that they're both UUIDs in the um, in the database, but in some cases you're allowing a string like like on line 24, and then in other cases it's getting passed in directly as a, as whatever. I don't know wh where you're doing that. Same here, um, read items 54. So the, the question isn't whether you should be converting into a string and back. The question is whether that inconsistency uh, is maybe signaling a different problem, right? That is this, is this the right place uh, for this logic. So like the last line, 54. What you're saying is that read items takes the user ID as a string. Is that the is this the right place to make that assumption? Because maybe you have it as a as a UUID somewhere and they have to convert it to a string so that you can convert it back in here. Just just something to think about. Um, to, to make this a little bit more consistent. But otherwise, the reason I'm nitpicking on this is because this looks fine. Um, so I'm going to go to the user stuff now because I think that uh, this is the new stuff. And I'm just going to look at the view because I don't expect much to talk about there. Um, so you use a post on users. And... There's a page for all the users. It looks like a table. View user items. Okay. So it looks like you might be putting the items in. Oh, there's a form. Oh, I see. It's a button. 
I see. So you let them click on a button to view that user's items. And, you know, that, I mean, if you want a button, that's cool. You don't have to make it a button. You could make this a link because I don't see any hidden fields or anything. So that could be a link. That might simplify the code a little. Uh, and then new user. It's probably a form. Yeah, it's a form up here. Okay, and so you have first name, last name, email, and submit. Cool, this all looks uh, just great. Let's go to... Uh, I, I want to see the model. So we're creating this table. That's great. Users, it has a UUID, a first name, last name, email, text, active. I'm curious about that. And then date created with a default not a uh, default of now. You can create a user, you pass in a first name, last name, email. So the active default is true, that makes sense. Um, returning ID, good. Update user. So this is to update them if they're active or not. Nice. Delete a user. Read in all users in the database. And order by date created, interesting. And then read a single user. And here you're doing the same thing where you have, you're converting the string to a UUID. Okay, interesting. And then handler. So we have create user and handle index user. So you're reading in all the users, rendering the users page. When you create a user, you're passing in the first name, last name, and email, and then redirecting back to users. Okay. I mean, that looks pretty good. I, I want to go back to the items because I think now I understand better how users work. And so when you create an item, you're passing in the user ID. And so in the handler, sorry if I'm going kind of fast, when you create the item, the user ID is somewhere passed in in the params. So now I'm going to go look in the core because I think that's where the stuff gets set up. So here in the routes, see, I recommend, and I, I recommend it in the course, and, and Daniel did it, where you have the routes in one big table. The reason I like that is I can, I as an external person to this source code, can come in and see everything that I could possibly post or get on this app. But the same applies to everyone working on this project that's all there. That's a preference. I know a lot of people like to, for instance, use the users slash and then have another handler under that that parses out the rest of it in another file. Um, I like to have it all flat so I can see everything. All right, so you have a post to users and it's just calling handle create user. So I'm gonna look down here and see if I can figure out where the user ID is coming from. So you have a wrap server, wrap file info, wrap resource, wrap TV, wrap params. I don't see where the user ID comes in. Now wrap params, standard. You got the wrap reload, which I didn't see used. Might want to get rid of that. Um, A second. Just wondering where the user ID comes from. I, I want to now go back to see an items view. Just trying to understand how this works. A new item has the name, the description, 
and I don't see in here the user, oh, the user ID is coming from the params, the path params. I gotcha. I see now. So by putting the user ID here in on line 78, it's getting passed into handle create item in the params. Okay, so that means that a user can create items for another user. That's fine. I thought there might be some authentication in there. Um, all right, so this, this code looks really good. Uh, it's a simple app. What I'm going to recommend uh, is to take this and add a standard um, user login, protect the um, protect each user's lists from other people. Okay, so like I can't look at your list, you can't look at mine. And have a user login, and if you want to get fancy, something like a password reset. So I log in as a particular user, and then uh, it will limit me to what I can see. And if I'm not logged in, I can't see anything. Uh, further after that, I would suggest something like sharing lists, having multiple lists per user, having multiple users per list, um, you know, because I could add you to my list so you could see the stuff and add stuff to it too. Um, so that would be a full many-to-many -many relationship, many lists. Uh, you know, as a user, I have many lists, and as a list, I can be seen by many users. Cool, Daniel, this has been a great uh, job. So I don't have much to say. I wish I had more comments on it, but... Uh, everything is looking um, very clean and neat, and um, you know I've I've run through the app. It works, so I don't know what else to say besides just encourage you to to keep working on it um, and move in that direction of of authentication um, and uh, just comp making it more complex. So adding. Uh, multiple lists per user and multiple users per list. Cool. See you later, Daniel.